And welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode we are taking the Eurostar from London to Paris in standard class. But is this really the best way to travel? Let's find out. Yeah. But first of all a big thank you to all of you. The channel is getting more and more views in the last weeks and the 2000 subscribers milestone isn't far away. Thank you all. This really means a lot to me and my hobby. So we are gonna check up three topics in this video. Number one, the Eurostar trip from London to Paris itself. Number two, the travel alternatives. And number three, what really should be better at Eurostar. Let's start with the trip. We had a few wonderful days in London and stayed at Premier in London Old City. A real recommendation if you want to stay near the center and wanna have an affordable hotel. But all holidays have to come to an end, so we ended up on the northern line towards King's Cross and St. St. Pancras International Station. St. Pancras is the main hub of Eurostar where you can take trains to Paris, Amsterdam or Brussels. The boarding process can be divided in four parts. Number one, ticket check. Number two, security check. Number three, passport check to leave the UK and number four, passport check to enter the European Union. Keep in mind, since Brexit you need to provide a real passport, not an ID card. So if you succeeded on all four parts, you end up on this nice waiting hall underneath the platforms. There are some shops where you can grab a coffee or some snacks for the trip. Approximately 20 minutes before departure, our platform was announced and the big rush began. Today's ride is the Siemens Velaro E320 with almost 400 meter length and 894 seats. And they all seems to be sold out. By the way, are you interested in Siemens trains? Check out the video about the Velaro MS, which is in service for Deutsche Bahn since December 2022 as ICE3 Neo. And we're in. Welcome on board the Eurostar from London to Paris. Me and my kids booked three seats around a table. If you feel familiar with this table design, you probably rode the Austrian railjet before. Because this is exactly the same. Siemens. With a little delay of five minutes, our journey starts on Eurostar from London to Paris. Good morning also for today, we have a router helping us to keep the train a clean environment. Our trains are fitted with very sensitive smoke detectors even in the toilet. Therefore, smoking, wiping, zinc spray, zinc, electronic and vapor cigarettes, all of this is not possible, of course. Please check that your luggage doesn't block the corridors or the ways. Thank you. My team and I wish you With some good. nice window views, let's check out topic number two the price and the travel alternatives. Let me be honest, one major problem of Eurostar are the prices. We booked this trip three months in advance and paid 280 euros for one adult, one teenager and one kid. And this was a special offer celebrating the fusion of Thales and Eurostar. Last summer we had to book on short notice due to the EasyJet chaos and paid over 500 euro for London to Brussels. But are there better alternatives? Let's create a scenario to compare. There are three major options for this route. A. The bus. B. The airplane. 
see Eurostar. Let's start with the cheapest and slowest, the bus. Flixbus from London to Paris will cost you 30 pounds or 34 euro if you book three months ahead. On short notice, it will cost 34 pounds or 38 euro. It is in fact the slowest, over nine hours from Victoria coach station to Paris Bercy. But if you are a transport nerd like me, you have to at least once take a bus from London to Paris. Because traveling on a bus inside a train under the sea is absolutely unique worldwide. The second option is the airplane. Three months in advance, an airplane ticket from Gatwick to Orly will cost you 35 euro plus 20 euro for the Southern Railway service from Victoria to Gatwick and another 12 euro for the Orly bus from the airport to central Paris. So all in all 67 euro. On short notice, the airplane ticket will cost you 67 euros. So with the transit in London and Paris, this will leave you with 99 euro. Keep in mind those are the cheapest fares, no checked back. And with transit time, security check, passport check, this will take at least 5 to 6 hours. Moving on to the third and sadly the most expensive way to get from London to Paris, the Eurostar. Again, 3 months ahead. This ticket will cost you 125 euro on short notice 224. It is the most expensive but also the fastest. Including the boarding process, this journey will take three and a half hours from London King's Cross to Paris Gare du Nord. As I mentioned in my Amtrak video, it is really frustrating that the most climate friendly mode of transport is the most expensive. This can't be right and in my opinion the European Union has to support those cross-border rail services like Thales and Eurostar to get more and more travelers into the train. Back to the trip. In the meantime the Eurostar entered the Eurotunnel for its 20 minute journey underneath the sea. Also on board on this train are five French customs officers. Before we entered the tunnel they were sitting in a coach and you could approach them and declare your goods. After the tunnel, on the French side, they were walking through the whole train and randomly checked passengers. So let's talk about topic number three. What should be better on Eurostar? In my personal opinion there are two major problems with Eurostar. Number one, as I mentioned before, is the price. The most climate friendly mode of transport has to be the most affordable. Number two, the comfort level in standard class. The seats aren't really comfortable, the leg room isn't really great. Only comparing the comfort level, Eurostar is the Ryanair of the rails. And not a problem, but a wish. If someone from the Eurostar Thales group sees this video, why aren't dogs allowed on the train? I can travel the whole continent with my two dogs, except the United Kingdom. The only way for dog owners from mainland Europe to the United Kingdom is the ferry. So Eurostar, my West Highland White Terrier, would love to see the land of his ancestors. Make it happen. Anyway, let's draw a conclusion. Eurostar will always be the number one option for transport nerds like you and me. But for the majority of tourists the travel experience in standard class has to get better or more affordable. Or both. So as we pull in in Paris Gare du Nord, let me thank you again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button or even consider subscribing.
wherever you are, have a great time. See you in the next one.